Hello again, I am Blonty, and that little waspy sounding gizmo is Parrot's new rolling spider mini drone, and I spent my afternoon screwing around with it, and its terra firma based brother, the jumping sumo. The flying mini drone is a palm sized quadcopter you control from your iPhone or Android smartphone. And unlike its bigger brother from Parrot, the AR drone, this one definitely fits in the toy category. But for a toy, it's actually a remarkably sophisticated little mini drone. Certainly far, far cleverer than the usual palm sized flying remote controlled copters out there, quad or otherwise. For a start, it's incredibly stable in the air, either moving around or just hovering in place. And this is largely thanks to the multifaceted sensor arrays on board, including an accelerometer and gyroscope. Underneath, there's an ultrasonic sensor for telling it how far away from the ground it is. But if it's too high for that to work, it uses an air pressure sensor. There's also a high speed downwards facing camera for calculating how fast it's moving relative to the ground passing under it. See, I told you it was sophisticated. And yes, I did ask, and the camera can be used to take photos with. Don't expect too much from that. They will be just 640x640 640 640 low-res snapshots, and there's no video recording. But it could still leave room for some fun little pics to pop up on Twitter and Instagram and the like. Those big wheels on the side do dual duty. Firstly, you can go into rolling mode where you can waft your way gently around on the ground, but you can also roll up walls and across the ceiling, and this is where it gets its name, the rolling spider. You know, despite being obviously a flying quadcopter. The large, very lightweight wheels also serve as a bumper system, keeping the props from crashing into people or objects directly, but you can remove the wheels and go pure quadcopter mode if you like. The whole thing is very, very robust. I watched various tech journalists clumsily crash these things around for two hours straight, and there wasn't so much as a single broken prop. And when it comes to actually controlling its flight, it gets its control feed over the low power Bluetooth smart protocol, giving you a range of about 20 meters. And while the apps we were using were still not quite finished and ready for prime time, controlling the mini drone was remarkably easy and intuitive. It takes only a couple of minutes to really start getting the hang of things. You can spin 90 degrees or 180 degrees on the spot with a swipe of your finger, or you can use the accelerometer in your phone to tilt and steer it around with more finesse. There's even some built-in tricks it can do at the touch of a button, like a 360 loop-de-loop. -loop. Even landing is made easy. You just tap a button and it'll do it for you. And if you let go of all the controls while in flight, it just automatically hovers perfectly in place. The app works across Apple devices and Android devices, and yes, even the seven of you out there with Windows 8.1 based smartphones. And it's kind of hard to tell from the footage here in the camera microphone, and considering there was music and several other drones and conversations happening all around me, while it does have the iconic whine of a tiny little high-speed prop whirling around, it is neither as loud as I expected, nor as irritating a noise. More of a droning hum than a mosquito whine, really. That was a pleasant surprise. But most remarkably of all for me was how resilient it was in flight. With its little army of sensors keeping it stable, even flat out swatting at it with your hand, it does very little to phase it at all. It writes itself back into its stable hover position nearly instantly. Very impressive, especially for something this small, and especially for what is, you know, a toy. <laughs> you kids these days, you're getting it good. Now, the jumping sumo was similarly robust and more fun than I'd expected. To be honest with you, I came to this little press event very eager to check out the quadcopter, because, you know, quadcopters are awesome. I wasn't all that interested in its stablemate mini drone, stuck as it was in a mere two dimensions, trundling across the ground like some sort of ancient remote controlled car. But the fact is, the jumping sumo is a whole big bag of giggles. I grew up playing with a lot of remote controlled cars, and this thing is awesome. Awesome. Like the Rolling Spider, it's controlled by an app on your phone or tablet with swipes and tilts and the like, and it is every bit as easy to control. But this time, it's over Wi-Fi, and that's because Bluetooth wouldn't quite have done the trick for squirting the live video feed from the camera mounted in the Sumo's nose. And yes, you can record the video, and also take snapshots. The Jumping Sumo is wildly maneuverable, and it will get up to a speed of 7 kilometers an hour, and you can turn within your own footprint. And as you may have guessed by its name, it has a special party piece. It can break free, albeit briefly, from the two-dimensional travel restrictions of wheels and literally leap almost a meter off the ground.
You can also flip the sumo upside down, pre-cock the cleverly designed jumping mechanism and use it to give something, say a can of coke, a mighty kick and send it flying instead. And just for the record, while everyone else who tried it failed repeatedly, yours truly leapt from the ground and landed square on one of those little podium thingies the very first try. A remarkably rewarding feeling, really. Actually, I felt like an enormous kid. Well, I normally feel like an enormous kid, but you know, even more so when I completely nailed this little trick. <laughs> now, between the speed, maneuverability, onboard camera, and its spring-loaded kicker, the Sumo seems utterly built for mischief, and that's just fine by me. The Jumping Sumo and the Rolling Spider both use exactly the same replaceable lithium polymer battery. The Sumo sucks about 20 minutes of funsies from a charge, which takes an hour I'm told, and the Flyer will eat up the charge in about 8 minutes. So a spare battery or two might be a good idea. So I asked about it, and it seems a spare battery will set you back just under 30 Aussie dollars. Not too bad. The quadcopter mini drone itself will ask for 140 Australian currency units, and the Sumo, $220. They'll be hitting shelves within the next fistful of weeks, late July to early August, I'm told. They're just polishing off the app before they can launch. And hopefully, when that does happen, I'll be getting hands-on for some longer playtime. So keep an eye out for a proper review of these fellas, and some other little secret experiments I want to try when I get one for some proper testing. But, on first impression, they're both a big pile of smiles, even for us grown-ups. But of course, the target market is kids and teens, and I'm pretty sure these badass little monsters will wind up on quite a lot of Christmas lists. <laughs> My birthday is at the end of the month, by the way. Hint, diddy, hint, hint, hint. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.